Good morning. Good morning. We are glad to welcome you to worship this morning. Thank you for being here with us. I'm Jimmy Alexander. I'm one of the pastors here. That's my privilege to welcome you. And that's our prayer today, that you'll, you'll feel the presence and power of the Lord, that you'll be caught up in his, the rev, revolution of his word, and that you'll learn more about how God can speak, how God speaks personally to us as we continue in our sermon series that we began last week. I can hear you now. We're glad that you're here. I'm going to invite you to join with me as we pray this morning. Faithful God, as we enter to your holy house of worship, we thank you for the pleasure and for the privilege of being here with our brothers and sisters and you. We ask you to bless us with the beauty of your presence and to anoint us with the power of your Holy Spirit to draw us closer to you, Lord. It's our desire to hear you. So, Father, as we share the testimony of our faith and, and the hymns, and as we share in times of prayer and as your word is proclaimed, we ask you to speak to us and to change our hearts. We ask this all in your name as we offer to you our worship. It's in the saving name of your Son, our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Together we say, Amen. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Brenda Weidman, one of the pastors here, and I welcome you. We're so thankful that you have chosen to worship with us this Sunday morning. What a delight to look out there and see all of your smiling faces. We welcome you. We welcome you if you're a regular worshiper, whether you are a visitor, a guest who has been with us many times, or whether you're a guest who's here for the first time. We have some guests here from the Texas Central Conference, and we're delighted that they are here with us today. So be sure you say hello to them when, in our meet and greet um, time. We welcome you under all circumstances, even if you're coming through electronically, each and every person makes our worship richer. If you happen to be a first-time visitor, we ask you to humor us a little bit if you would give us your contact information, your um, local address, your, con your um, email, your phone number. We would like to, um, at the very least, give you a gift to say we're so glad that you've been here, just a mug with some information about our church to share with you. We'd like to bring that to your home. We won't stay long, just to deliver it and to say Thank you for coming. So please humor us and, and do that, uh, provide that contact information for us. We have a very busy church, as you are aware, and I'd like to uh, make you aware of some of the things that are going on this week. Um, if you're a member of the church council, we ask that you join us on Tuesday evening at 6. That meeting will be here in the sanctuary, and that's, uh, that's different than usual, so make a mental note of that. Um, we're meeting here because the Texas youth need a lot of our rooms. We're so thankful that they are, are going to, there's so many of them that they, they just are here all over, but this is where we will meet so that they can use the rooms for, for their needs this week. Um, on uh, Thursday, we will, um, and, and let me say a little bit more about the Texas Youth Conference. They're from the Texas Central Conference. There will be youth who are not here yet, but there are 80 of them, I believe. And uh, one, two, three, four, five, six adults I see um, sitting out here. Uh, they will be doing mission projects out in the area, helping folks um, do all kinds of handyman kinds of things. Um, and, uh, and so they will be benefiting our community, um, not only this church, but those in the community around us. And we're so thankful that they are here. We will have a, a potluck on Thursday evening at 6 in Becker Hall to, um, to honor them and to allow them to, uh, to tell us a bit more about what they've been doing all week. So we hope you can come and hear about, uh, about who they have gotten to know and what they have been able to do um, on Thursday night at 6. So that's, uh, that's happening this week. Um, next week, uh, the Wednesday, we will, the UMW will have a family dinner. 
uh, put your arms around the world, uh, and we hope that you can come for that as well. There are tickets being sold out in the narthex, so if you haven't already purchased your ticket, do so. There is a new um, small, small group study. It's meeting twice, twice a week, two times, for depending upon whatever time you, suits best for you. Same study, just happening at two times, Sundays at 9.30 and Wednesdays at noon. And this is, it says spiritual gifts, but, but really it is how your spiritual gifts can grow your church. And there's a really wonderful brochure out in the narthex. Pick up one of those as you go through if you're interested in that study. It gives you more information there. Um, also, you have an insert that looks like this. Uh, VBS is coming up in July, and uh, we uh, just draw your attention to that as something that's happening in the future. So a lot going on this week and in the future here in our church, and we, we invite you to be a part of as many of those things as you are able. And now, let us join our hearts and our minds as we begin our worship. standing as you are able and join me in our historic creed of our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. That is good. And all the time. Well, you didn't know you were going to have a test this morning to see if you could still use your hymnals. But, um, but we did. We, we did, and you passed the test. Thank you. Um, so hopefully the technical issues are, are over with. That's the only one. Good, good. Well, we are glad that you're here. Will you greet those around you and help us to make sure everyone is made to feel welcome this morning in worship?
morning. I'm adding some to our scripture. I'm starting, it'll be Psalm 16, 8 to 11. Listen for the word of God. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body will also rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. This is the word of God for the people of God. As the ushers prepare to come forward, may we reflect on that beautiful scripture, reflecting on the God who never abandons us, but gives us life and joy. And may we, in thanksgiving and praise to that God, give back our gifts, knowing that whether that gift is just one dollar or many dollars, it's an act of praise and worship to the God who loved us first.
holy and ever-present God, you never abandon us. You show us the paths to life and to joy. And it is with joyful hearts and with songs of praise that we give back our gifts to you. And we pray that they be used to build your kingdom and for your glory. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. come to the time in our church worship where we lift up the joys and the concerns of this church family and ask for the blessings of our Lord upon each and every one of them. We do have some joys. We have birthdays, anniversaries. There may be someone out there who has a birthday today. And uh, if you're one of those, we, uh, we sing praises for your birthday. We have a couple of um, um, specific uh, birthdays and anniversaries to note. Um, Bobby and G. Billingsley have made a donation to the prayer shawl ministry in celebration of their 53rd wedding anniversary, which was last Wednesday, June the 8th. And Shirley Hoffman, who's normally up here with the choir, but because the choir isn't here, she's not up here. She may be out there somewhere. I, is she? There she is in purple. Hi, Shirley. <laughs> That's a birthday. And um, she has made a donation to the music ministry in honor of her birthday, which will be this coming Tuesday on, on June the 14th. So happy birthday to you and to anyone else who has a birthday this week. So we're so thankful for the celebrations in our, in our church family. We do have some concerns we're thankful, first of all, that Melba Brown has left Mercy, been discharged, or sorry, she was in Northwest, um, and has gone home. Um, I saw her on Thursday, 
and had seen her on Monday, and she was so much improved. It was so exciting to see how much better she was um, by the end of the week. So she's home, still recuperating, so keep her in prayers um, as she recuperates. Unfortunately, Pat Brannan has gone in the hospital um, since the end of the week, and uh, she's having breathing difficulties. And I spoke with George and saw her yesterday, and, and she's still having a hard time. So lift her in prayers, and, and George was concerned that he couldn't help her with the breathing at home. So be sure that you pray for him as well. You can tell that this has been hard on him as it has been on her. We're not aware of anyone else in the hospital. If Emery, of course, we are aware of that. Um, we are aware of Emery, who's still down in Children's Hospital in Little Rock, um, still recovering from the, uh, the surgery that she had earlier. Um, pray that that uh, tumor uh, no longer uh, continues to grow because it's, although it's not cancerous, it is um, certainly sp uh, growing and, uh, and, and starting to invade some of her organs. So pray that that, uh, that growth will stop and they will be able to remove it um, instead of just some of it, but all of it. We also ask you to lift in prayer one of our sister churches here in Bella Vista, the Village Baptist Church. Pray for their, their pastors, their congregation, their ministries, and their missions here in the Bella Vista area. We all join together, not only with other Methodists from the Texas Central Conference, but also with, with other Christians and other faith in this area to, um, to, to spread the love of a God who would send his son Jesus to earth to walk with us. There will be a complete prayer list available at the back of the sanctuary as you exit worship, and we invite you to take one of those home and use those in your prayer time during the week. And now as we prepare to go to God in prayer, may we also join together in the prayer song, um, at, uh, which is printed in your bulletin. Thank you. Holy and ever-present God, God who speaks our name, Lord, you know us and guide us and strengthen us and pave the way for us. You speak to us in so many different ways. Lord, forgive us, for we are all often so sure that all things are, are of our own doing. Forgive us when we do not see your hand at work, when we try to explain away the mystery of your presence. Forgive us, Lord. We know, deep in our hearts we know, that you speak our names in the everyday circumstances of life. You speak our names in our coming and our going. You speak our names in everything that we walk through. Lord, in healing, you speak the names of those who have been able to go home from the hospital this week. Melba Brown, Marshall Johnson, those who are recovering from injury and surgery and tests and are now healing. J.R. Anderson, 
and Bob Shaw and Lee Moore. Lord, in healing and strength, you speak the names of those who are still in the hospital and are still adjusting to new medications and treatments. Pat Brannan. In comfort and peace, you speak the names of husbands and wives and families who are walking through the struggles with their loved ones. Lord, we thank you for each word, for each touch that you provide that sustains us in times of joy and in times of struggles. Lord, you speak the name of Brother Jamie and you inspire him in the message you have placed on his heart this week. We ask that in that hearing, we each hear our own names spoken so that as Brother Jamie shares this message, our lives will be changed in you. Lord, we lift these prayers and all the unspoken prayers that are on our hearts to you this day as we join in the words of the prayer which Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, thank you, Sonny and Elaine and Brock, for the music. I was realizing it seems strange to only have five of us up here this morning. I'm missing the choir and Larry and Judy, but we're not missing you, so we're glad that you're here this morning. Well, this morning we are continuing our sermon series, as I said, on, on recognizing how God speaks to us, because God is God who's very personal. It's God's God who speaks to us as, as, as his children, as the created order of the universe. He cares about us, and he, he wants to communicate, and he does it in, in so many different ways. We're reading out the book of Isaiah. We're reading in Isaiah in chapter 45. We're just going to read three verses there, one through three, and we'll piggyback on to what Sandy has read to us from Psalms. In there, Isaiah, um, you know, is a prophet, so he's speaking a word from the Lord, and he says this. This is what the Lord says to his anointed. To Cyrus, whose right hand I take hold of. To subdue nations before him. To strip kings of their armor. To open doors before him so that the gates will be shut. And here's a word that you and I can hear very personally. I will go before you. And I will level the mountains, and I will break down gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron. And I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches stored in secret places, that you may know that I am the Lord, the God of Israel. And then it says, who summons you by name. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And we want to focus on that aspect of, of verse 3. For I will take the secrets of darkness. I will offer them to you. I am the God who summons you by name. Because God is a God who does know us personally. And God speaks to us. Last week as we began the sermon series, we thought about the Samuel and how God spoke to Samuel. And we talked about how God speaks to us in our lives and how God speaks in a limitless number of ways to us through his word, through the Holy Spirit, through prayers, through impulses, through inspirations, through touch, through people, through signs and wonders. And, and the list of things can go on and on because God wants to communicate with you personally. And so many times when you and I are reading scripture, we realize that God spoke to people. 
And he would speak to people, too, by calling them by name. Now, when he wanted to get a hold of this little boy, this 12-year-old boy who was ministering in the temple with the prophet Eli, he spoke to him and he said, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel responded. Our theme verse, 1 Samuel 3.10. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. He spoke and he heard. And then we know that when Mary Magdalene went to the tomb on that first resurrection morning, when she was locked in her grief and she was devastated, what she had discovered that the tomb was empty, Her whole world was transformed. When she heard the Lord speak her name, she thought he was the gardener, but he said to her, Mary, Mary. And when she turned around, she saw it was the Lord. And when a former persecutor of Christians, one who had had sought to destroy the message of Christ, was on a road... His life was intersected by the presence of the Lord and his name was called out, Saul, Saul, in Acts 9-4. See, God knew each of these people. And he knew where they were in their spiritual journey. And just as he knows those same details about you, and he knows those about me. Because he knows us personally. And God communicates with us personally. And God wants to communicate with all of us. He meets us all where we are. You know, you don't have to be that set-apart person. It doesn't require a seminary degree to hear God speak. You don't have to be an expert in spiritual discernment to hear the voice of the Lord. You know, we think that God only speaks to certain people because they're more holier than we are. We see the ones he spoke to in Scripture, though, and then we suddenly realize that God just doesn't speak to the super faithful. He speaks to people. He speaks to all of us. In the Scripture, we have account and account and account again and again and again of how God just spoke to ordinary people in pro-life-changing ways to reveal to them his love. And when God speaks, and he does it in a way that's so unique to who we are, God always speaks in the language of our personal lives. Always. Something that intersects right where we are. And it's amazing that God can get a, speak to us in a way that we can understand. Now, in times, in another summary, we're going to talk about how do you recognize the voice of God. Our purpose today is just to really understand God speaks to us personally. Now, God spoke to the prophet Isaiah. In Isaiah 43.3, he says, I will give you the treasures of of darkness riches stored in the secret places, So that you may know I am the Lord, the God of Israel, who summons you by name. Who summons you by name. Maybe you have a a time, an account, a testimony, a witness of when God spoke to you and you heard the Lord call your name. And if that's happened to you, you know how that transforms you. And it's not an experience that dissipates in a moment, but it is an encounter with Christ, with the Lord, that lasts forever in your life. And it shapes you, and it empowers you, and it changes you, and it calls you into deeper deeper relationship with the Lord. Well, I invite you to turn your attention towards the screen and see what happens when a mother hears her child's voice. Imagine this scenario, you're 30 years old and you lose
lose your sense of hearing. But then doctors tell you that you may have the chance to get it back. It sounds like a good thing, right? Well, for Dawn, making the decision was a bit more complicated. I lost my hearing about 15 years ago. We knew that her hearing loss was as bad as it was when we would be talking to her and she would turn and walk away. That's when we really noticed that there was a serious problem. When I was 30, I made my first appointment to have my hearing check. I realized <coughs> that I had profound hearing loss. And I had lost speech recognition, so hearing aids have never been an option for me. Communicating for me is extremely exhausting. I communicate with people by reading lips. It's almost impossible for me to follow a conversation. In a group, I'm lost very fast. I have no idea what anybody's saying is I'm completely unable to focus in here right now. <laughs> it's very difficult for me to be in large groups, so I tend to stay with a small group of people that I'm comfortable with. The first time I met with Dr. Slattery was two years ago and he told me that I was a candidate for the cochlear implant. It was very hard to make the decision to have the surgery. It took a lot of influence from my family. I'm not afraid of the surgery. I'm more afraid of hearing. I've never heard my eight-year-old son's voice. In my mind, I can hear my son's voice, but I know that I don't hear it. So maybe I'm afraid of what I will hear compared to what my brain tells me that I hear. Just yesterday, she was able to hear her eight-year-old son's voice for the very first time, and we were there to capture it. Dawn's activation went fantastic. She's going to leave here soon to go meet her son and hear his voice for the first time. I still haven't spoken to my youngest son, and so I'm looking forward to hearing him. She never heard my voice. I'm just really excited that she could finally hear. I'm nervous. I'm hopeful, but I'm also afraid. I guess I still have that fear of I'm not going to hear him. Hey, Mom, could you hear me? Yes. <laughs> Now you can talk and they can hear you. I love you. Yeah, I love you too. Are you happy that I can hear you? Yes. <laughs> now she can finally hear me and I'm not silent anymore. Don't you know that God gets excited when he says, they can finally hear me. I'm not silent anymore. And when we recognize the voice of God, and we can hear him speak to us in a language of love that is unique, unique to who we are. I mean, the mother's reaction was priceless. She, she was afraid to hear her son's voice. Because it maybe it wasn't like she thought it would be. And maybe you are the same way. You're afraid to hear the voice of God because maybe his voice isn't going to be as you thought it would be. But all her fears were unfounded and they melted away when she heard her son, call her name and say, I love you. And that's how it is with the voice of God. He calls our name. And he wants us to know his love, that he's a God who personally cares about us, that he's not a God who's foreign or absent, but he's with us. And so God uses his Holy Spirit to speak to us. And the Holy Spirit is the treasure of God. And it's the Holy Spirit that takes the treasure of God that is hidden in the darkness of secret places and brings them to light to us in our own lives. I mean, it's the Holy Spirit who guides us in our journey of living. It's the Holy Spirit that gives us the personal instruction for the different stages and experiences and circumstances and situations of life. And it doesn't matter what current stage of spiritual development we're in God can find us exactly where we are if he knows the very numbers of hairs on our head how do you and I think that he does not care about where we are at the moment and the Holy Spirit never communicates anything to us that is personally contrary to scripture never and so when God speaks to us he speaks to us in any manner of ways to tell us 
of his love. And it's the Holy Spirit that confirms in us the love of God, that transforms our lives, that changes us from a point of shame and brokenness and sin to a point of rejoicing and encountering his holiness. And it's in love that God may be speaking to us so that we can have a changed life and a lifestyle and our hearts can be changed and our ways can be changed so that we become more like him. And you know when this happens. You know this is happening because the feeling you get is not a feeling of, of despair. But it's a feeling of, of greater des desire to be in a relationship with the one who loves you. And you will allow his holiness to transform who you are. Continually, we talk about how God changes us from the inside out. He goes into the secret darkness of our lives to work in marvelous and magnificent ways to change us from within that is revealed out. And he uses that, his Holy Spirit, to do it. And he speaks to us so that change comes about because he communicates with you. The Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit communicates to us the character of God so that we are changed. We're changed. Have you ever been, and I bet you have, and I find myself doing this more and more often, in a place where someone recognizes you and as they're talking to you, you're looking at their face thinking, who are you and how do, I, how do you know me and how do I know you? And it's hard to even focus on who they are or what they're saying because the whole time you're playing this game in your mind of saying, okay, say something so I'll recognize who you are. And sometimes you're successful and that person finally says something and you realize who they are and you're so happy. But then there are those times, right? Right? That you've completed the conversation, you've said, had a good day, and you turn around and you're still trying to figure out who they are. You know what that's like. And you know the joy of discovery, and you also know the frustration of still having to wonder. But that's not how it is with God. You will know. You will know. And so don't be fearful. And don't be afraid and, and don't try to set and stew on how will I recognize. You will know. Because if God loves you enough to speak your name and to communicate from God's heart to your human heart, God will have a way to help you to recognize his voice. And in a few weeks, that's the very topic we're going to talk about. How do you recognize the voice of God? So you know what I have to say to you? Stay tuned this summer and don't go on vacation. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you speak to us. In any of us in this room, you care about. For we are fearfully and wonderfully made in you. And so, Lord, we invite you to speak to us. As we've sung this morning in the hymn, Lord, speak to me. We invite you to speak to our hearts. And Father, we are amazed that you would call us by name. And that you would say to us, Peggy or, or Bill or, or Ralph or Mona or, or John or, or Jane or Jan or whatever. That you would call us by name. And that your love is so great that you never hide your love from us, but you continually reveal your love to us. You've done it through your son, Jesus Christ. And you use the power of the Holy Spirit to reveal to, your love to us. And so, Father, speak to us so we may know. May we say the words to you that Samuel said, Speak to me, Lord. For your servant is listening. May that be the attitude of our hearts and of our lives. 
In the sovereign, loving name of your Son, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. And together we say, Amen. This morning, our closing hymn is, is one of your favorite hymns. It's hymn number 593, but it'll be on the screen, I hope. It's, it's Here I Am, Lord. And as we share in this hymn, Know that the altar of the Lord is here for you to be in a time of prayer or a time of personal prayer. Or if you'd like to be prayed with by Brenda or myself, it would be our privilege to pray with you. If you'd like to come a part of this church family, we would love to welcome you here this morning on transfer of your membership from another church family. Or on your profession of faith in Jesus Christ, who ha- is Savior and Lord of your life. We invite you to stand, we invite you to sing, and we invite you to come this morning as you feel led.
as you go throughout your week, say those words from Samuel. Lord, speak to me, for your servant is listening. And then listen as God calls your name. Um, in a week or so, or actually it's in a little more than a week, the annual conference will be taking place in Hot Springs. If you are planning to come down to witness the commission of Pastor Judy and Pastor Brenda, we want to know that because we're going to have a special reception for them following the commissioning service at the embassy suite. And the reason we want to know it is we don't know the room number that we'll be in yet. And we won't know it until we get there because I've I've worked a deal and I'm renting somebody else's <laughs> hotel room for us to meet in because it's too expensive otherwise. And um, so if you know you're coming, let us know so we'll be looking for you and call the church office and let us know that. Um, be in prayer for our, our guests and missionaries from the Central Texas Conference. We're glad that you're here. And come and join us on Thursday night. Remember, we're feeding 80 kids that aren't bringing food all right <laughs> so we need you to make sure you bring enough portions and we really need you to come we want you your food more than we want you in some ways but um we really need you to come on on thursday night and help us and welcome our guests that will be in our church all week so go forth and knowledge our god a god who's faithful faithful in our past faithful in this present moment and god is faithful for our future and remember we don't simply come to church but who are we called to be be the, the church. church. Have a great day. Thank you.